I read something. Like, two our country today alone. We are here to say enough is enough. What does it take to create safe communities? Everywhere we look, gun violence is decimating our families and communities. Whether it's the mass shootings in shopping malls, concerts, schools, and places of worship, the retaliatory gun violence in urban neighborhoods haunted by the legacy of economic disinvestment, racism, and poverty, or the solitary suicides committed nationwide with increasing frequency, gun violence adds up. Over 100 Americans die from it every day. 100 plus lives lost every single day. We started March for Our Lives to say not one more. Not one more. Not one more. No more school shooting drills, no more burying loved ones, no more American exceptionalism in all the wrong ways. The COVID-19 pandemic has only further laid bare the structural inequities that contribute to violence in our communities, intensifying the need for holistic solutions to gun violence. 
Violence is a complex and layered issue, but it is undeniable that the root causes of much of the violence in the United States lie in poverty, marginalization, exclusion, and glorification of guns in our culture. It is amplified by the societal belief that a gun can solve our problems. We call for robust investment in the things that communities around the country need in order to live in safety, including community-based violence reduction programs, suicide prevention programs, domestic violence prevention programs, and mental and behavioral health service programs. We need leaders who are not only willing, but are demanding to take these bold steps to address the national gun violence epidemic. One too many lives have been lost, and it's time to One too many lives have been lost, and it's time to take action. We say, not one more. 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 Like there is no issue. Yeah. 
was disrupted by an AR-15. Similarly, the Stoneman Douglas victims had their high school experience taken away from them in six minutes and 20 seconds by the same weapon. I am the same age as Joaquin Oliver. I am the same age as Nicholas Dwaret. Two 17-year-olds who will not get to celebrate their 18th birthday as I have planned. Two students who will not graduate with their friends as I have planned. Two children who will not be able to say goodbye to their parents as I have planned because of six minutes 20 seconds and the purchase of an AR-15. My summer plan will be filled with SAT prep, working at Walmart and attending my dentistry internships. The, U the students at Uvalde Elementary were only three days away from their summer full of ice cream afternoons and sunset evenings. But instead, their skin burnt like under the summer sun, a summer they'll never have. Tears dried up, evaporated in the heat of a million bullets fired, shattering the start of the trillion endeavors of Annabelle Rodriguez, age 10, Alexandria Rubio, age 10, Jose Flores, age 10, Xavier Lopez, age 10. The damage cannot be reversed, and while my plans are set to change, gun laws still have not, and the question still remains, children or guns? The answer is painfully evident, and yet the decision has not been made by our legislative officials. In this way, if I am not here tomorrow, if we are not here tomorrow, if my peers and I are unable to graduate and follow up on our plans, let's change gun laws now. Good job. Right on. truth 
and action. And I have been carrying this same sign over and over and over again from one march to the next rally over and over again after countless horrifying incidents. I am also a volunteer with the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship, a national organization that is working to get church folk involved in doing exactly this, showing our love in action. Because thoughts and prayers are not enough. There are plenty of things that can be done to end gun violence. Plenty of things. Right now we can thank our New York State Legislature for passing landmark gun violence prevention yeah. efforts. Yeah. also passed legislation last week that will help keep us safer. Thank you, Legislator Smith. Our city and our school district can work together. There was a report published by Every Town for Gun Safety, the National, uh, what is it, National Education Association, and the, what's the other one? Nice. Uh, AFT. Uh, AFT. American, AFT, Federation. American Federation, Federation of Teachers. Teachers. The name Ooh. of the report is Keeping Our Schools Safe. Find it online. Read every word. And then what we need to do, every single one of us, is go see your school boards and your superintendents yes. and your cities Woo! and talk to them about that report and make your school safe. Woo! According to what's in that report, it is brilliant stuff and it does not involve more police carrying guns in schools. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having an asthma attack today, so I'm having a little trouble breathing. I'm just gonna wrap it up here by saying, the, one of the things that we're doing with the Presbyterian Peace Fellowship today, in addition to marching for our lives, Churches across the country are working together to march for our lives with our students. And there are churches also that are putting together a national movement. And if you are a member of a faith community, I'm gonna invite you to join us. The movement is called Guns to Gardens. And what we are doing is putting together events across the country, inviting gun owners, if you have guns that you don't want anymore, for whatever reason you don't want them, Bring them to one of these events. Churches, find a chop saw. Find someone who knows how to use it. We will train you how to do this. Let's dismantle those guns. There are almost 400 million guns in this country. We can get rid of them and turn them into garden tools. We can, we can do what the prophet Isaiah told us in a modern way and turn our, our swords into plowshares. We can turn our guns into garden tools. Find me, I will give you one of these brochures and we can do this. Where there's a group already forming in this region, we are going to do this, join us. Last thing I wanna say is thank you to our students. Yeah. week of high school and instead of spending this week partying and playing they organized this march and that is what it looks like when love happens with truth and action this is what it looks like we can do this people let's do it If there are any Presbyterians, I want to get a picture of every Presbyterian here together. Because the 
Presbyterian Peace Fellowship is collecting up pictures from around the country. So join me for a photo. We'll help her out. Oh, it doesn't have to be right here. <laughs> what do we want? <laughs> what do we want? No. What do we want? I can't what do we want? Gun what do we want? Gun
I am an educator, a special education teacher at New Rochelle High School. Yeah. I'm a police member. And I'm a citizen who votes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What we see in our schools today is frightening. The first thought on my mind when I enter school in the morning should not be, is today going to be the day that, God forbid, a gunman comes into the school and I get shot? Or is there going to come a day when next to my pens, pencils, paper clips, Apple paper holder, there's going to be a gun in my drawer? No. 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 These are the thoughts that cross my mind. I don't talk about them, but they do. And I'm sure many other students and teachers and administrators share this same thought. We need to do something. Marching is important. Protest is important. Rallies bring change. They do, and they matter to raise awareness. We want to educate and raise awareness. But we also need to speak. And our loudest voice is heard when we vote. Yeah. 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 That is the ultimate way to effectuate and bring about change. We can scream all day long. We can preach over the pulpits all day long. And I'm for it. I'm an ambassador. I'm in ministry. Four <laughs> generations of preachers and teachers and pastors. I'm for prayer. I believe God. I know what he can do. But he's equipped us, okay, yep. yeah. to effectuate change and make this place, this nation, what we want it to be. Yeah. So if you want to do something, after you march, after you get on the bus, after you contact your friends, and you have rallies, and you walk around nations, and you go to the White House, you make sure you go to the polls and you vote. Yeah. Yeah. officials don't respond, if your state officials don't respond, if your county officials don't respond, if your local officials don't respond, you need to vote them out. for the Peekskill City School District on behalf of my president, Jillian Ballon. I don't know if my vice president, Jill, uh, Brandon McDonald is here or any other board members, but I want to say I am so proud of you. Yes. I am proud of our Peekskill High School yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. you. You are the right now generation. Yes. You are not Generation Next. You are Generation Now. Yes. Yes. You can be the change that we want to see. Be. That's right. You can be the change that we want to see. Yes. If we're not moving swift enough, make us move. Yes. 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 As an educator, I woke up to a text message of a former player being critically wounded in a drive-by shooting in Yonkers. 
Mike Nolan was a former player, a friend, and a mentor to many other kids. And let me tell everybody something. There's no clinic and there's no grad school class that prepares you to have to tell your players or students that someone that they love is in a coma because of a shooting. It was one of the toughest, the toughest thing I've ever had to do as a coach or an educator. Three weeks later, Mike passed away and he left a massive void in the lives of friends and family. The gun used, of course, in this shooting was illegal. Enough is enough. In 2016, six years ago tomorrow, a gunman entered the Pulse nightclub in Orlando targeting Hispanics and members of the LGBT community. 49 innocent souls were taken that morning. As a member of the LGBTQ community, I watched the news wondering if this could happen to me at a bar or club that I was going to go to that weekend. Once again, I asked and said, enough is enough. Enough is And of course, four days ago, I got to school like any other morning, and a social media post was brought to my attention, and it threatened a school shooting. The building went into lockdown. We had kids huddled in corners. We had kids and teachers hiding in closets as we awaited the SWAT team to arrive. We spent the rest of the day, once we knew the building was safe, counseling our students, counseling our staff, and letting them know that they were safe. Enough is enough. Enough is enough! As educators, and there's hundreds, hundreds of educators here today, unbelievable show up by our nice and AFT folks. We have the ability to demand change, and we have the ability to demand common sense gun legislations. We need to keep taking to the streets, and we need to take change. Enough is enough. Enough is enough! Thank you. My name is Tom McMahon. I'm a teacher at Mayapac. Um, I just want to say to the students today, this is absolutely inspiring. Thank you so much. All, all of these people, and particularly the teachers, are here for you guys. Yeah, right. You inspire us. We're here for you. The murdering of children in schools is a problem that is unique to the United States. Kids are not killed in Canada's schools. The UK schools, Australia schools, or any other country's schools for that matter. Do these countries have criminals? Yes. Do they have mental illness? Yes. Do these countries have pornography? Yes. Do these countries have the same movies, video games, and music as the United States? Yes. Yet their children aren't mowed down by gunmen dozens of times every school year. Our country offers thoughts and prayers and ideas like arming teachers, making Kevlar backpacks for our kids, turning schools into fortresses, and every other crazy idea you can imagine, all to prevent actually addressing assault weapons. Let's be clear, it's the guns. They are what need to be legislated. Other countries have figured this out. All we have to do is follow their example and we know that lives will be saved. Yet here we are. Even if you don't believe it's the guns, aren't the lives of our children worth finding out? Yeah. Yeah. I certainly believe they are, and so do 75% of Americans. Yeah. America must act now. McCormick Lyons. I'm here as a mom. I'm here as a teacher. I'm here as a the president of the White Plains Teachers you. Association hey. and an AFT vice president. But mostly I am here because I care yeah. about our communities. I care about our children and I care about our future. And I want to say thank you and I am sorry that you have to do this mm. because you have been failed. This time must be be different. David Hogg said he knows that this no, time will no. David Hogg said he knows this time will be different. Yes. This time must be different. So I ask you to look at the person next to you or the loved one that you came with and promise to show up again. Because 
we fall into complacency. And it's really easy to show up on June 11th when everyone across the country is doing it. But we need to commit to showing up time and time again. Are you in? Are you in? This time will be different. Say it. This time will be different. This time will be different. Thank you. And we will do this alongside you. For you, you are our future. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is You're Alex. You're not on. Oh, wait. Alex. Hello. Okay, this is working. Good morning. My name is Alex Seriello, and I'm 12 years old, and I'm a seventh grader at Ardsley Middle School. Like all of you, I am very concerned about the gun crisis that is plaguing our nation today. I am even more concerned about the total lack of empathy and action by too many of our lawmakers. I am finishing the school year and learned quite a bit in social studies. When the Second Amendment was written, there was no standing army, and our nation's defense was entrusted to well-regulated militia. That's right. I also learned that the most lethal gun at the time was a musket, a single-shot rifle that wasn't very accurate and took minutes to reload. Our founders never envisioned the kinds of guns that exist today, yet half our Congress and a majority of our Supreme Court believe guns should be as easy to get as a pack of chewing gum. Let's be very clear, people who commit mass killings with weapons like the AR-15 are not well-regulated militia. Yes! Yes! Why on earth does anyone need an AR-15? It is a weapon made for one reason and one reason only, to kill as many people as possible as quickly as possible. Uh, look, I have nothing against hunters, but why do they need an AR-15? In case the deer shoots back? Educate! No way! I love to learn. School is a place where students and teachers have a right to feel safe. I want my school to be a beautiful place to see my friends, to have fun, to grow and learn, and to make lasting memories. A school should not be a maximum security prison. That is not an acceptable solution. And as a seventh grader, let me be clear. Students deserve more recess time, not more lockdown drills. The answer to gun violence is not more guns, it's more laws, regulations, enforcement, and a ban on assault weapons. My generation does not want a society that is armed to the teeth. We do not want a society that glorifies guns. We want, we expect, and we demand that the lawmakers we elect make laws to protect us. This is a nation run by we the people, not we the NRA. my generation is way smarter than the people in Congress that have done nothing to protect us. We don't need thoughts and prayers. We need action. As a kid myself, I would never want to have to cover myself in blood just so I'm not killed in a place that I should feel safe. Just so, um, so I hope these do-nothing lawmakers are listening. My generation is growing in numbers. We are turning 18 every day. We are registering to vote every day. Every day. We are coming of age every day. And we are coming for the voting booths. And get ready because we are going to vote you out of office. Thank you. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? And when do we want? much words to say and uh, my cousin and I 
try our best to come up with a, a small couple of minutes cover song. So if you can just hear us out, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So Thank yeah. Thank you. No, no problem. No problem. The rocks are coming loose just at the edge Are we laughing? Are we crying? Are we drowning? Are we dead? Or is it all a dream? The bombs are getting closer every day That could never happen here Has this war come to our doorstep? Has this moment finally come? Or is it all a dream? in our nature, just an image of our maker. Are we not good enough? Are we not brave enough to become something so greater than the violence in our nature? Are we not good, good enough? Or is it all a dream? So predetermined faith, we are condemned. And maybe we're a book without an end. We're not stories, we're not actors. We're awakened, in control, and this is not a dream. We can break this mold, set in motion something new. Forget what we know, evolution overdue. Fight the current, pull away, get away. Are we not good enough? Are we not brave enough? Is the violence in our nature just a... Are we not good enough? Are we not brave enough to become something so greater than the violence in our nature? Are we not good, good enough? Or is it all a dream? We have to do this over and over again until we get the change. Hopefully we don't have to see each other many more times. But in all seriousness, we need to show up and thank you. Good job. Oh. We just like to introduce some Miranda, please. All right. I'm too short. <laughs> Let me mute this thing. Me! Repeat after me. Me! you have no idea. You saw it, no? And rage is not polite. And I shall not be polite because of the fear that my kid may get killed. That you may get killed. That I may get killed. What the F? Enough! Enough! I told my dear friend, Marjorie, Reverend, she just spoke. For days I told her, rage has taken me hostage. <sighs> because even though there are more people rallying and marching and engaging in this cause, 
nationwide. The mass shootings are increasing. Where is the change? We need to vote. <laughs> Younger generations inspire the ones after you. It is the only way. Do not be comfortable. Be very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's the rage. It comes from the bottom of my feet. Ten years ago, tomorrow, Paul's nightclub mass shooting. Ten years ago, mostly LGBTQ plus brothers and sisters and they, 49 of them killed, 53 I believe if I remember well, injured, 10 years ago tomorrow! Shame on us. Shame on us. Thank God for Trump. Because we got so pissed off. And we mobilized. Because he shook us out of our comfort zone. We were so complacent. And now Biden, and we kind of started to relax. Well, let's relax a little bit. Ooh, don't think ouch. Ooh, COVID happened. No, I may die tomorrow. We don't know tomorrow. None of us. We are borrowed. My mother passed away a couple of months ago. These kids, not from gun violence, but we don't know tomorrow. Ni una más. Say it. Ni una más. Ni una vida más. Ni una vida más. Ni una pistola más. Ni una pistola más. Ni una bala más. Ni una bala más. Carajo. Carajo. That's them in Spanish. Because there's no room for politeness. One last thing. As we see all of these numbers, stats, facts. To my Latino people. My brown and black brothers and sisters. Guns do not discriminate. They take everyone out. And the one behind that gun, whether that person is mentally ill, whether that person is a homophobic, whether that person has some kind of xenophobia, racist agenda, If they keep having this easy access, we will keep showing up here, yelling and screaming, pissed as hell. Yes! No more easy access! I gotta get, right? We gotta get a driver's license. And now imagine, if I hire a contractor to build my custom-made home and I tell him my house needs to have one entry, one door for entrances and exits, do you think City Hall is going to give me the permits to build such house? How is the sacred site 
for learning for our kids to expand. How is this sacred site like Ted Cruz messed up idea to have one door? Because obviously the good guy with a gun did not work. As a matter of fact. 19. 19. Right? Good guys. The entire force, right, of the police school district in Uvalde. What was it, 45 minutes waiting? 47? About an hour? 78 Too long! Too long! Too long! No! We gotta take action! We got to vote! And I drop this mic symbolically! Come on! and I uh, live here in Pisgah. I love my community, I love my town, I love this country. This is not my, I wasn't born in this country, but I love it as I, I'm, I'm so uh, thankful that I'm here today. And at the same time, so sad that I had a call from a 16 years old asking for help. Parents, please help us. I, I'm sorry, but this is, it's okay. It's okay. Look at your husband. We're here. How do we came at this point? How do we not do more? How cannot our officials that we selected are not doing more? How do I tell my nieces and nephews that once they go to school, I may never see them again? What about church? What about this? Is, there's no. There's, there's no. How did we come to this point? ¿Cómo dejamos pasar todo este tiempo? Yo pienso que las palabras sobran. I think we are like already said enough, said too much, but on deaf ears. How many more rallies? How many more? I'm sorry, how many funerals? I'm just thinking right now about the, uh, the husband that I went to the the wife's funeral and had a heart attack yes, yes. because of the pain. The pain that we all are having because we know that that could be my sister. That could be my, my little nephew who's uh, six years old. How do we even, I, I, I don't even have the words. I am ashamed, I'm angry, I'm sad. I'm all, like, all these emotions. This is trauma for all of us, trauma that we are what about them? Like they, they are the, our future. What are we showing them? And they're now they're the ones that are telling us, come on already, it's enough, it's enough. We need more, we, we just sort of more. This is for them. We are passing the, 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 the uh, uh, like the microphone that I have right now to them. This is what we're showing them. This is where we're living. This is our future. I am I'm so sad and I apologize. Um, my husband and I always do what we can in, in town, but I think like it's not it's not even enough. What, how many more rallies? How many more going to Washington D.C.? How many more going to Albany? I'm tired already of like going so many times to Albany. Like, is there anybody listening? So, thank you, Angeline. I know Angeline since she's like three years old, and now. Um, how can you say no when somebody asks? Can you say what you feel? Because I, I'm not the only one sad or angry or upset or dealing with trauma. What about mental health? This is not a one thing. This, we all, we all in this together. We are all family, extended families. We are all in the same community. So I just wanted to say that, that I'm here with you guys. I support you. I thank you for doing this. Um, so we look up to you as well. There's so much that we need to learn from you guys. So uh, just thank you. Let me get rid of everything.
Hey, six years old, thanks for buying a bench. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Rose Rowland. I am the former uh, chapter president for Brady United Against Gun Violence. And ladies and gentlemen, you have done a terrific job. I have been to a number of these rallies, and I cannot remember the last time I saw this many people. So give yourselves a hand. Now, I have been in the gun control movement for 12 years. Ever since Sandy Hook, when my middle schooler came home, threw himself in a chair next to my desk and said, we're in a shooting gallery and there's no hope. Imagine that. Is that a wonderful way to end your school day? So I became active in the gun control movement because I couldn't stand the thought that my child thought that there was no hope. Now, we in the gun control movement are supposed to be very polite to gun owners. We're not supposed to say gun control, that's fair bolton. We're not so, we're supposed to say gun sense or common sense gun legislation. <laughs> but you know what? And I want you to repeat this every time I say to that. To hell with that! <laughs> this morning I was lying in bed watching Grace Anatomy because I was too lazy to get up. <laughs> And there is a pediatric surgeon on the show called Cali, not Cali, uh, Arizona. And Arizona says, pediatric servants, surgeons must abdicate for the tiny humans. And I thought, I hadn't been to one of these for a while. I've been sick all year. And I said, you know what? It's time for me to come back to the gun control movement. Yes, I'm calling it gun control. <laughs> And it is time for me to start advocating for the tiny humans again. Because I do not want to be the grandmother who drops their grandson at school and then identifies them from the green Converse sneaker because their head has been blown off by an AR-15. To hell with that. I am tired of going to a movie theater and checking the exits and the length of the seats just to make sure that if a gunman comes into that movie theater, I could hide. To hell with that. To hell with that. I am tired of wondering if I go to the grocery store to pick up butter, that I'm gonna to have to wonder if the freezer is big enough to hold me and two other people when someone comes in and shoots the place up. To hell with that. I am tired of people who think that a teacher who just lost his entire elementary school class could have had the presence of mind to pick up a gun when his children were watching movies and take out a gunman with an AR-15. To hell with that. To hell with that. Of people wondering where did an 18 year old get the money for this gun when we all know that there are financing set up at every one of these gun shops and they don't have to pay because they are committing suicide to hell with that, to hell with that. I am tired of hearing the excuses I am tired of hearing the thoughts and prayers to hell with that. To hell with that. And I'll tell you what else I'm tired of. I am tired of politicians and candidates who say the right thing when they are running and they get there and cave. And I'm sure you all know who I mean. How can we make this work? How can we make this better? Maybe you have to pay cash for your gun. Maybe we outlaw financing for firearms. Maybe we force gun owners to carry liability insurance. Maybe we stop worrying about their goddamn hurt feelings. To hell with that. And maybe 
you go to a rally and you or you go to a candidate's forum and you stand up there and you say, tell me what you know about the gun violence epidemic. Tell me your exact plans. Tell me what you plan to do when you get there. Because this nasty little secret is once they get there, it's too late. If they are not strongly in our corner before they get there, they're not going to be strongly in our corner afterwards. So you can call. I'm not telling you not to call. You can write. But unless that person that you actually put in office has this as their top priority, it ain't going to happen, folks. So to in terms of, high, of voting for people who say, why, yes, of course I'm for gun sense. To hell with that. To hell with that. As I've heard it too many freaking times. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bell, and as always, when a student of mine asks me to step in, that's what teachers do. Right. We step in for you. Right. So I got your back. I am here. I'm not going to make you scream, but I will tell you that as a parent of two Peekskill High School students, as a teacher to many of my students that are here, teacher from the South Bronx, I teach high school. I am on the LGBTQ board here in Peekskill. I teach at Bedford Hills Correctional Facility on Fridays. I give my Friday nights up instead of going to a party. I take action, like Margie says. Um, I think that's what is most important, what you do with your lives every single day. I choose to be an educator. I choose to be an artist. I choose to have a, name, a voice, and I choose to be the best parent that I can possibly be. But I will tell you that lately, going to school, my behavior has changed as an educator. I have become a mom because the students that I have in front of me are like my children and I think every single day keep the door closed I sound I sound like somebody else I don't even recognize anymore don't touch the door keep that door closed I have turned into somebody else and then the moment that I feel I'm having joy and we're having a good time because education should be having a good time you should not feel like it's a major task and stressful. There should be some type of good feeling and joy when you are learning. That's right. And when I feel that good feeling, all of a sudden I become fearful again. I have to look around. Who's in the class? Who's missing? Who walked out? And it's really difficult to teach that way. And it's every single day and I have to go through, every student has to go through a metal detector and be frisked in my school. Some of them harassed. Open up your, 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 um, your book bag. Taking out pics, I mean, it, it, is, it is insane what we go through every single day just to start the day in school. And the moment that there's class discussion and the moment that we are engaged Something in me pulls back, looks around, looks at a door, counts my students, and I teach high school. I don't teach kindergarten. Now I'm counting my students. I'm going to the lunchroom, making sure the doors are locked. I'm having lunch in a completely different place. And so I'm here, like I said, for my amazing students, my community. Um, I take action, which is what we should do on a constant basis. I'm here for my own children and to be able to support them and to say, keep moving forward, keep taking action, put the work in, don't be complacent. Okay? I'm here to support you, so thank you. 
I am so proud of you. I love you. My name is Wilfredo Morrell, and, um, and I'm a human being, and just a human being, just like you are. They said louder, louder. I am Wilfredo Morrell, and I'm a human being. 19, number 19, children. A week ago, I was at an event, and there were the pictures the pictures. I still have those pictures in my head. It was the age, just think about the age. The reason, my goodness. And I believe that I hear, yes, we have to go to our politicians. Yes, we have to put some regulations, something. But guys, let's think about the money for a second. Let's think about the people who benefit for one second. Let's think about the rules and regulations, but it's still the people that will continue to receive the money. Because you see, at the end, it's about what I can make. You understand? Thank you, somebody said it. Profit so all the people. In yeah. the crying, in the talking, you had to hit those individuals who are receiving that money. Yeah. It is about the benefit. It's about that money again. Mm -hmm. Again and again and again. And it's greed, it's power, and more money. I understand the rules. I understand policy. I understand all that because we go to the Hill and we go to Albany and yes, it's another bill that will be passed. But who is countable? Who is going to demand that those rules, those law are put into practice? Because you see somebody mentioned about getting comfortable. Getting comfortable. It's like a wave, right? Oh my God, it's a tsunami. But then once the water kind of settle, yeah. <laughs> We start fucking up, and I'm sorry. But when you go and you really hit that person in where that money that he or she or whatever has been receiving is no longer always getting, you know, smaller, then, then folks, you're making a difference. So in the ask, as we all do, it is how I'm going to hit that person's pocket because you see, they never at that table because they're always in the receiving part of it. You understand? They stay away. But unfortunately, our politicians need to be stronger because you see, power, greed, being in control, not often, not often take us to another place because sometimes that little voice that say you can do it and you have all this power and you can go the other way. You can forget about your community. You can forget about your purpose as to why the people voted for you. Why we put you in power. But the bottom line, my people, it is the greed, it is the money. Yes, I'm not saying no to policy. I'm not saying no to go to the hill and demand. But I'm saying to our politician, you better stop. Because you see, when the money, m m money do so many things. Money kills people. Yes, guns kill people, but money consistently continue for that to happen because it's another commodity for us. So, I love you all. I really, I heard today was when I got the invitation from, again, one of our students. And there is no way, there is no way that we cannot be here today. Okay. even in, in whichever way, so I congratulate you. The other thing, and lastly, is that tonight, the ironic thing, that tonight at six o'clock, I'm going to be at Fins and Brew,
where we're going to do basically an unveiling of a sculpture yeah, to show yeah. you what we can do with guns. Yeah. And if you can be there, because it's not, it's not a weapon to kill people. We are the weapons. We are the people doing that stuff. So thank you so much. May God bless you. And we'll see you. High School, and I just want to say thank you to all the teachers that came out, because without your support, none of this wouldn't have been possible, and you know, in the long run, we are in this together. If it happens, it happens to both of us, and that's the messed up part. To be a child in America means to have an escape plan. Everywhere you go, you have an internalized route to safety just in case. This just in case could mean a matter of life or death. Living in America means that it can happen anywhere. It can happen at a school. It can happen at a sacred place of worship where people go to experience camaraderie. It could even happen right now. Why do I need an escape plan? If you have the opportunity to prevent tragedy, if you have the resources to keep people safe, if you have the power to change something, then why not do it? Getting killed for going to school isn't a political matter. People dying isn't a political matter. Moments of silence don't bring back the dead. Start talking. And now I would like to call up our beloved superintendent, Dr. David Mauricio, to say a few words. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Good afternoon. So much has been said today, so I'm not, not going to repeat it, but I'm going to speak about uh, one thing, leadership. As a superintendent, but more importantly, as a father of a kindergartner in this district, when I drop her off, I expect to pick her up. On my desk are three monitors. The first monitor is focused on literacy. It's focused on how we can get better at teaching our children to read and write. The second monitor is on leadership, where I watch videos and TED Talks and figure out how I can be a better leader for our children. The third monitor is a monitor of cameras, in which I'm not watching the joy of learning. I'm not watching teachers at their craft. Let's give it up for our teachers who are here today. I'm not watching our children play on the recess ground or eat together and laugh and joy and talk to each other. I'm watching the perimeter to make sure that our schools are safe not only for my daughter, but for 3,600 children in this community. Next to my monitors is a cube. And the cube has five pictures. A picture of an African American child. A picture of a Latino immigrant child. A picture of a white child in our community. A picture of a child with special needs in our community. And on the top, it says, your child. And whenever we struggle with a decision, because that's what we're struggling with, there's one side and another side. And when we struggle with decisions, I look at that cube and say, what is best for your own child? And do that. I want to thank Mrs. Hallman Johnson, our board trustee, Mrs. Branwyn McDonald, our board trustee, Mr. Eric Rakita, our board trustee, and all of our board trustees. Because at a time in the year where we struggled with the pandemic and deciding what to do for our children and staff to keep them safe. In a year where we decided what do we do about our immigrant children and how do we best receive them and educate them. 
in a year where we struggled with making decisions about our pride community and supporting them and welcoming welcoming them and treating them fairly for who they are. I have had to make decisions, not about literacy, graduation rate, ENL students, but rather decisions about how to keep our children safe. And so I'll close with two very important things. Let's give our students another big round of applause. We appreciate you. We thank you. And I'll end with this. We are in front of a library. I would rather be here fighting for books in our classroom than fighting for what we are asking for. The very simple reality that our children need to come home. So I will share this with you. I will share this with our leadership. I have not always made the right decision, but I've always made the decision that's best for my daughter and for our children. Here's the one reality in leadership. If you don't come to the table, nothing moves forward. And so we ask one simple thing. You've heard many ideas about how to solve this issue or how to prevent the issue from happening. The reality is this. Think about your own child as a leader, your grandchild as a leader, and ask yourself, what is best for them? I'm going to close with an uh, Indian proverb. When elephant fights, when elephants fight, the only thing that suffers is the grass below. We are here to nurture our children. Leaders, I ask upon you, come to the table and find the solution. It is there. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a 16, I'm 16 years old, a rising junior at Pisco High School, and I will be the last speaker uh, for today. Ariana! All right, all right, let's go! March is defined by Google as to walk along public roads, or in our case, sidewalks, in an organized procession to protest about something. Four is defined by Google as used as a function word to indicate purpose. Hour is defined by Google as of or are relating to us or ourselves, especially as possessors or possessor, agents or agent, or objects or objects of an action. Lives is defined by Google as meaningless, insignificant, worthless. No, that isn't what Google actually says. It paints the picture quite vividly for us. The Robb Elementary School shooting, 19 students dead, May 24th, 2022. Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting, 28 dead, December 14th, 2012. In those 10 years alone, 948 school shootings have occurred in America. I'm going to say it one more time because I don't think you understand. 948 school shootings have occurred in this country of ours. So much so that guns, something that we can control, are the leading cause of death amongst children, American children and teens. So to high school students about to finish our last week of high school, we knew it was imperative to march on sidewalks with a purpose. An organization, March for Our Lives, created by survivors so your students, your daughters and sons don't have to be one. Prayers and thoughts can only do so much when the media continues to tell the future of the world that their futures do not matter. Reposting on social media and then forgetting about the issue until something else happens can only do so much when it's easier to get a gun than to drink alcohol. Action, true action, is the only way we can bring about effective change. So stand with us, march with us, vote wisely because most of us aren't even 18 years old yet. Because it is up to us, the hour and march for our lives, to make sure we do not have to bury one more student but to see them walk on that stage, a diploma in their hand, dreams in their fingertips. Yes, yes, yes. So thank you to our lovely police department that helped us make this first school. Yeah. To city council, who received the email on Saturday that we were gonna do this the following Saturday and just helped us. And to Angeline, 
I am so honored to be your friend. And I am I would like to call up Angeline to do our closing remarks. Thank you. This concludes all of our speakers and performances. I want to thank you all for showing up today and making all of our voices heard. We need to continue to prove that our actions will force our country to be one step closer towards effective change. To continue on with this movement, please join us for the Peekskill Gun Buyback Sculpture Unveiling today at 5 John Walsh Boulevard at 7 p.m. I want to thank all of our student volunteers and organizations for supporting us. Thank you to the New York State United Teachers, American Federation of Teachers, and the March for Our Lives organization. We need leaders who are not only willing, but are demanding to take these bold steps to address the national gun violence epidemic. One too many lives have been lost, and it's time to take action. We took action today, and we will continue to take action. We say, not one more, and we are here demanding change for our world. Thank you for coming out, everyone, and have a great day. Control. What do we want? Gun control. What do we want? Gun control. When do we want it? Now. And when do we want it? Now. And when do we want it? Now. And if we don't get it, shut it down. 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 Thank you, guys.